Hey everybody, Joe here with Rebel Health Tribe, and today I'm going to talk about one of the most common questions we get with regard to thyroid, and that is why TSH is not necessarily the best marker to use for thyroid function. I'm also going to tell you how you can get in on uh, some private webinars that we're going to be having. These are going to, you're going to get an exclusive invitation to these private webinars, uh, thyroid webinars. One is going to be with Dr. Sachin Patel, and the other is going to be with Dr. Isabella Wentz, both very well known, very well respected, and brilliant when it comes to thyroid. Uh, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, you're also going to get two free reports on thyroid, so you can start getting some answers right away. And you're also going to get videos. We're going to uh, take questions from you and create videos for you, so we'll, we'll be answering your questions directly. So all you have to do to get that, it's absolutely completely free. There's no charge for any of this. Is just let us know where to send the information. So just fill out the form below with your name and email, and, and you'll get the first report right away, and you'll get your invitations to the thyroid webinars coming up very soon. So get in on that, and then leave us a question below, uh, and we'll answer them in one of the upcoming either webinars or an upcoming video. All right, so just fill in your information below, and you'll start receiving that information right away. So, all right, TSH. This is the most common marker that doctors use to measure thyroid function, and in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why um, that might not be the best, uh, the best idea. So, first of all, what is TSH? TSH stands for Thyroid Stimulating Hormone, and that is a hormone that's produced by the pituitary gland, and it's a way for it to signal the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. So that means the higher your TSH, that's indicative of lower thyroid function, right? That makes sense, right? If you're producing uh, higher than normal TSH, that means you're producing lower than normal thyroid hormone. And so a higher TSH is indicative of lower thyroid function, right? And by the way, I'll add that the, the reference range for TSH is not correct in most cases. Uh, the typical uh, reference range is zero uh, is 0.45 to 4.5. That's the reference range that most doctors are using, 0.45 to 4.5. And that 4.5 is actually too high. Uh, there's newer research out, it's actually not that new, but for whatever reason, doctors are still using the old rest reference range. That upper range should be 2.5. That upper reference range should be 2.5. Uh, so anything above 2.5 should be indicative of some sort of thyroid problem. All right, so that's one problem. The other problem is this, and this is particularly with Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is, is an autoimmune disease that uh, where your immune system attacks and destroys your thyroid tissue, your actual thyroid gland. All right, so here's what happens with a flare-up. When you're having an autoimmune flare-up, a Hashimoto's flare-up, part of your thyroid tissue is being destroyed by your immune system. So what do you think is going to happen to any hormone that's contained within that part of the gland that's getting destroyed, right? Of course, it's going to end up in circulation. So you're going to end up with more thyroid hormone for a period of time in your bloodstream in circulation. Of course, what is that going to do to TSH? Your pituitary gland is going to sense the higher thyroid hormone and turn down TSH. It's the opposite of what it should be, right? So this TSH could actually end up in this normal range, certainly in this normal range, the, the old range that they use, but it could even end up in more of an optimal range. You could end up with TSH that's, you know, uh, 1.7, 1.8, and that's not going to show up on anyone's radar. And so that's why TSH really isn't enough. It's not enough of a marker to tell whether your thyroid is functioning properly. Okay, so what's the solution? If you're convinced you have thyroid symptoms and your doctor runs TSH, you might want to recommend or request a full thyroid panel. Full thyroid panel is not just TSH, but uh, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and thyroid antibodies. That's the thyroid antibodies are TPO and TGA. That's going to give you a much more complete picture. Um, and in fact, the thyroid antibodies uh, may be the first sign that there's a problem. Uh, the, those thyroid antibodies could show up before any of the other markers uh, sort of go haywire. Could be a situation where you've got elevated antibodies, but there's not enough tissue destroyed yet where some of the other markers are, are sort of go go out of whack. So that's uh, that's what I would recommend. That's what I re re would request from your doctor is to get a full thyroid panel and don't just rely on TSH. So I hope that answers some questions and, and, uh, and helps some folks. Once again, leave us a comment below with any questions you have. Let us know if you're dealing with some of these thyroid issues yourself. We'd love to hear your story. And once again, uh, register below. You'll get those, those two free reports 
you're going to get your questions answered in some upcoming videos, and you're going to get an exclusive invitation to some private uh, thyroid webinars that's going to be just for people who, who sign up below. And again, all of this stuff is completely free. Uh, there's absolutely nothing to buy. We just want to help get this, this information out there. Uh, register below, and we'll see everyone later. Thanks.